Okay, th this was an interesting find at a uh, used bookstore in Dallas. Um, this is uh, Strange Cults. And this appears to have been, based on the spine, I'm going to guess that this was part of a, a set. This was one of those um, sets, probably called The Supernatural, according to the spine, uh, books that you could probably order on late night TV or something. Um, that was probably part of a set with stuff about UFOs and ghosts and all that. Um, this one is exactly what the title says. It's devoted to strange cults. And what I found interesting in this was um, a lot of it's you know pretty typical, but then there's some things in here that you're like, wow, I can't believe that made it into a book. Um, like the there's some... Uh, pretty extensive talk about Manson and uh, and the process church is mentioned in here as well as uh, Crowley's do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law um, and this is all in the section on violent cults cults of violence so that alone was worth the price of this book I think I only paid just a few bucks for it but uh, but what I wanted to bring up to this audience in here so if you have this set or if you have this there's, you know, again, surprisingly good for this kind of book that's more of just a uh, uh, kind of an overview for a, the, the layman. Um, there's actually some pretty good stuff in here and about the Manson murders. Of course, it's a pretty, the, the pretty standard, uh, pretty standard talking points on the Manson case. But uh, there's a good section on the Assassin's Cult the uh, the guys that used hashish to brainwash their people to uh, uh, to murder as professional assassins and the thuggies or the thugs um, and a really good description of how the thuggy cult worked and some of the mechanics of that and this is the part that jumped out at me about the thugs or thuggies or whatever there was a uh, they talk about all the uh, you know when the British stumbled onto this, how they tried to rehabilitate. And I think they successfully rehabilitated a lot of these guys and kind of uh, basically slowly shut this down because it was an intergenerational cult. So they had to give these guys a trade. And here's some of them posing with a, a thug rug that they would make. Um, they taught them trades so that they would leave that, uh, uh, leave the, the killing behind. And this is the part that I found interesting. They talk about one of their, uh, in an interview with one of the reformed thuggies that um, uh, was talking about how intoxicating this whole thing was. They would kill travelers. That was their main thing is they would kill wealthy travelers that were uh, traveling between villages for various religious uh, gatherings and whatnot. Anyway, they would capture these guys or, or uh, strangle them to death and steal all their possessions and then mutilate the bodies. Uh, and there's kind of, seems to be a ritual aspect to the uh, mutilation of their bodies. And then they would bury them. And then they would hold like a feast on the, after they buried these guys. And that was kind of to reward everyone for taking part in this because it was a group effort. It took uh, several guys to pull off the murder. And only the, the people directly involved in the murder were able to partake in certain aspects of this feast. And if you cheated and got partook in some of the, what they call gore, G-O-O-R, not G-O-R-E, but if you partook of this gore, that was their special, their uh, treat, if you partook in that, you had to go out and immediately murder someone to make up for the fact that you had kind of skipped ahead a level. And this is what I find interesting about their mention of gore. Again, G-O-O-R. Um, gore was distributed to those who had proved themselves by killing. If a novice happened to take any, he was forced to go out at once and strangle someone. This feast had a profound effect on the participants. A thug leader named Faringhia told his British captors, We all feel pity sometimes, but the gore of the Tupani changes our nature. It would change the nature of a horse. Let any man taste of that gore, and he will be a thug, though he would though he know all the trades and have all the wealth in the world. I never wanted food. My mother's family was opulent, her relations high in office. 
I've been high in office myself, yet I was always miserable while absent from my gang and obliged to return to Thuggy. My father made me taste of that fatal gore when I was a mere boy, and if I were to live a thousand years, I should never be able to follow any other trade. And that got me wondering if the gore, again, G-O-O-R, is a form of, uh, uh, they, they just refer to it like a coarse sugar in this, but I don't know of anybody who would refer to a coarse sugar as you know being able to entirely change their nature. And it really made me wonder if there is a tie-in to adrenochrome through that. I know that's kind of a taboo topic, but I find that really interesting that uh, these guy, that this guy cites this as this was so compelling that they would abandon everything else just to keep getting this stuff. And again, I don't think raw sugar would do it. I've had pretty good sugar in my time. No sugar that has ever made me want to murder. So, strange cults. Very interesting section there on the thuggy uh, cult and, uh, of course, the uh, uh, some of the processed church and things like that. Overall, pretty standard stuff, but it, it had some surprisingly uh, good information on some of that. So this is another one of those reasons why I really like uh, used bookstores, because sometimes you can find some older books like this that have some uh, really good jumping off points for other research. And again, that is Strange Cults from, I'm guessing, early 70s by the look of this. Uh, 70, 1976. So there you go. Strange Cults from 1976. And from as best I can tell, this is a, a group of authors. Again, this is one of those like, uh, yeah, this is Danbury Press, a division of Grolier Enterprises Incorporated. So I have a feeling this is part of a whole volume of stuff. So there you go.